As we get ready to have a great time with our family at Thanksgiving, let us remember the original reason for Thanksgiving. We're talking about that next on One Nation. Hello America, welcome to One Nation. I'm Dr. Jake Jacobs. As we approach the Christian holiday of Thanksgiving, I'd like to reflect upon a classic Norman Rockwell painting that was on the cover of Saturday Evening Post from November 27, 1943. Just a few months earlier, the American army had liberated Sicily, along with liberating a large chunk of southern Italy, along with the British and Canadian armies. Many Americans, Brits, and Canadians sadly had died liberating uh, that island and Italy from the oppression of the Nazis and from the fascists of that time period. But I want you to look closely at that, that wonderful Norman Rockwell painting. You can see in the picture there's a young Italian girl, and uh, obviously she's praying. And you can imagine that she's thanking God Almighty for her food and her freedom. That she had been living in an oppressed situation under the Nazis and under Mussolini. And to me, this painting really reflects the greatness of America, the greatness of our republic, and the, the valor and the sacrifice our soldiers uh, gave during World War II. There she is as she's praying, thanking God for her food. You can see a GI's canteen food before her. You can see this uh, first sergeant, top sergeant's coat wrapped around her, keeping her warm in the cold Italian weather in this time period in the fall of 1943. So I, I'm so impressed by this painting, I actually have it framed in my office at home, and I, I use it every year in my classroom to show my kids the, the valor and the greatness of the American military. You know, uh, I took my students to Anzio, Italy. Anzio, Italy is, it was a famous battle during the liberation of Italy during World War II where British, American, Canadian soldiers, thousands and thousands died. And so I took my students there to that graveyard at Anzio, as you see before you. There are 8,000 crosses there of our men who gave of the uh, ultimate sacrifice for Italy to be free, for Europe to be free from the oppression of National Socialism. And when I had come home from that trip, uh, I was at Woodman's, a grocery store not too far away from here, and I saw on the back of a van it said Roma 44. And I got all excited, and I went up to the side of the van, and there was an old gentleman who had come out of the van, and I said, excuse me, sir, were you in Anzio in 44? And he turned around and he looked at me and he says, yes, how did you know? And I said, well, I teach history and I see your license plate says Roma 44. And he looked at me and he says, really? He goes, I thought nobody remembered that. I thought everybody forgot about our sacrifice. And I said to him, sir, with me, that will never happen. Not in my classroom. My students will know this. And as long as I have breath in my lungs to share these stories, I will be sharing the stories of the glory and the greatness of our soldiers uh, during many of our, our, our campaigns, our wars. Another famous painting that comes to mind is George Boughton's 1867 Pilgrims Going to Church. Now take a close look at that painting. You'll notice something there. It really reflects the First and Second Amendments of our Constitutional Federal Republic. The Second Amendment, of course, being the right to bear arms, the right to protect your, your family, your life, your property. And this, the first, of course, being the right, to, uh, uh, the right of worship and freedom of speech, press, assembly, and the right to petition your government, but here specifically, the right to worship God Almighty. And if you look closely in this particular picture, you'll notice that they're not only carrying guns, they're carrying Bibles. And the Bible they're carrying is the classic English translation of the Hebrew and Greek called the Geneva Bible. This Geneva Bible um, so impacted English culture that Shakespeare would quote from it all the time, John Milton, uh, even William Bradford. Uh, the famous pilgrim who wrote uh, uh, Plymouth Plantation used this particular scriptures. Now the beauty of this Bible is, is that it, it really was describing, uh, because it came from a covenant theological perspective, the limited power of a king. And in fact, they had side notes inside the Bible that um, actually would critique bad kings in the Old Testament days. And King James I despised this Bible. In fact, he called it a Republican Bible because in this particular time period in Scottish and English history, there were a group of, uh, of political philosophers who believed in limited government, who believed in the sovereignty of the people over the sovereignty 
paternity of the king, and they call themselves Republicans. And so King James I uh, despised this particular Bible, but my particular point here is to tell you that this Geneva Bible had a strong impact on not only the English language and not only people like William Shakespeare and John Milton and others, but it had a pro profound uh, theological uh, religious impact upon the founders of this great nation, this Geneva Bible. So as we approach the Christian uh, holiday of Thanksgiving, let us remember those great words from the Declaration of Independence that declare that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that that Creator is called the supreme judge of the world in our Declaration and that that Creator is also called Divine Providence. So let us rely upon Divine Providence and thank Almighty God for the abundance of freedom and liberty that we have in this great nation. I'm Dr. Jake Jacobs, and until next week, remember, the truth shall set you free. If you thought that was cool, check out more videos on freedomproject.com. You'll enjoy them.